The brothers of the Coordinators Committee of the Governing Body were analyzing with us about how to help and what we could do. Immediately, the first Disaster Relief Committee was set up. And when we realized that there was already a need in the whole of Poland, 16 committees started their work. The number of DC-50 applications of those who wanted to volunteer increased every week by thousands, indicating that the willingness and readiness to help was huge. We prepared everything in order to be able to welcome the refugees at the border crossings, at the reception point set up by the authorities on the Ukrainian border, and at other locations where the trains from Ukraine were arriving. We knew we would have to ask the congregations for accommodations. At the beginning, we prepared a survey that helped us to organize everything. We know that it's thanks to Jehovah's backing, because in just a few days, we received more than 7,500 replies. Four assembly halls and 22 kingdom halls were temporarily converted to refugee relief centers. Having this opportunity to help the brothers, we saw an expression of Jehovah's love and might in all these efforts. Only Jehovah could prepare his people for such a well-organized and effective activity. Many of the brothers have commented that the fact that they see so much being done to help the brothers in Ukraine right now uh, convinces them that if they're in that situation in the future, if there's some time when they need that love or they need that help, well, Jehovah's Organization is going to be there to help them as well. Belonging to Jehovah's household, being part of a worldwide family is priceless. The hatred in the world continues to grow constantly. And there's just more conflict and, and disunity. Uh, at the same time, the unity and the love of Jehovah's people just keeps on increasing. And it just becomes more and more powerful. If you say so, Mark Sanderson. So we've been watching part of the 2022 annual meeting. There's quite a lot of material in this year's annual meeting devoted to what is essentially an exercise in the organization patting itself on the back regarding the war in Ukraine, which has taken countless lives. It's yet another example, unfortunately, of this organization leaping on any catastrophe as an opportunity to brag about how brilliant it is. I'm sorry, that's just the way they do things. This is the way this organization operates. Any development, good or bad, when it comes to Jehovah's Witnesses and their response as an organization is brandished as evidence that only with Jehovah's help could this happen. I obviously made a video, or I've made a few videos now about the Ukraine war as it pertains to Jehovah's Witnesses. If Tibor is gracious, here is a thumbnail of a JW Watch episode where I summarized the organization's response. And here is another thumbnail of a video that we made. This was actually a video where myself and the rest of my team went to the Hungary-Ukraine border with two vans to try to retrieve as many refugees as we could. And in the end, we managed to move 11 refugees. We didn't go to the border thinking, we only want to retrieve atheist refugees. We only want to retrieve... Catholic refugees. We only want to find Jehovah's Witness refugees. We were just looking for refugees. We just wanted to help anyone. And ours was just a drop in the ocean. If you think about it, when it comes to the amount of humanitarian 
energy and effort and compassion that was flung at Ukraine and continues to be because the war is still raging there and there's still a need to help those people and people are being helped by organized efforts regardless of their religious persuasions. None of that can be said regarding anything that we've just seen here. As I've repeatedly argued, the Jehovah's Witness organization looks out for itself and they can pat themselves on the back about having that attitude if they want. I just don't see anything impressive about it. It certainly is an evidence of divine intervention, which is how this is being framed. Thanks to Jehovah's backing, this humanitarian work was done. Only Jehovah could prepare his people for such a well-organized and effective activity. Those are the words that have just been spoken. When we set out with our two vans, we didn't do it just by ourselves. It wasn't just a case of let's jump in two vans and let's drive to the border. It was a coordinated effort. There was a Facebook group that we were in contact with and they were guiding us regarding what location to go to and which people at that location most needed help. So there were total strangers, people that we didn't know on this Facebook group who were working around the clock to make sure that total strangers who were in need of help from Ukraine could receive help. That is impressive. That impresses me. Because there's no strings attached. There's no, oh, well, as long as they're of a certain belief system, as long as they share my ideas and my values. There was none of that. It was just, these people need help. We need vans. We need drivers. Who do we have? And at that particular time, my team and I were in a position to do something. So we did something. We're not going to jump up and down about it. Yes, we made a video. But it's not like we're going to claim that we were being directed by God or that our efforts were evidence of any kind of divine intervention, which is the claim that's being made here. And unfortunately, as the annual meeting progresses, you're going to see more such material where the organization applauds itself for doing the mundane and helping its members when they needed to flee a war zone.